Hello viewers and a warm welcome to the show this evening. My name is Chef Andy and as you can see I'm joined by a guest as usual. Someone that is a very, very uh, strict follower of the show. She's pretty much managed to grasp so much from what we've managed to do on the show. And just like many of you who've managed to make it on the show, she managed to get her SMS through and she got the opportunity to join me on the set today. But before I proceed, I will of course allow her to say a few words before we proceed with the show. Thank you, Chef Andy. My oh. name is Doris Rebecca. I prefer Becky. Mm -hmm. I'm a HR professionally and I'm here to learn what to do with the ingredients placed on our desk today. Perfect. Now, of course, before we begin the show, very important that I give you an idea of what we're going to be using just for you to be able to uh, get an idea of what to expect for the show. I will, of course, also mention we're going to be making some gnocchi. Gnocchi is a very, very simple homemade uh, kind of a pasta. We're going to be pairing that with a very, very simple cauliflower uh, mixture that we're going to be incorporating all this together. And we're also going to be using some few ingredients such as cheese, which is of course to mention that this is of course not a strict vegetarian recipe, but you can of course keep it as vegetarian as possible by omitting such ingredients as the cheese that we'll be using. So from the very front, you will of course require one stock cube. You'll also require one teaspoon of cayenne pepper, a tablespoon of some dried oregano, and a teaspoon of some taco spice. You're also going to require one medium-sized white onion, some fresh thyme, and about four cloves of garlic. You're also going to require about half or a quarter of a cup of some uh, store-bought pasta sauce. You'll also require about a cup of some tinned tomatoes, of course peeled. You'll require some cheese just to top over your dish at the end, a bit of some lemon. You can use, of course, imported lemon or the local variety. You'll also require about two-thirds of a cup of all-purpose flour and of course some flour for dusting, some uh, black peppercorns to crush, and some, season to, some salt to season with. You're also going to require some, uh, some spring onions, which you're of course going to be incorporating to the mixture, some water to aid you in making your dough, some oil to cook with of course, and last but not least, some cauliflower, which is of course the star ingredient for the dish. But before we begin, we'll of course give you this chance to sit back, relax and unwind, and we'll catch you after a short break. Welcome back viewers. If you're just tuning in, you've of course not missed out on a lot. We began by introducing the ingredients we'll be working with today and we're right about ready to start the process. So I will ask Becky to start on to turn the grill on for us. And while she does so, I'll just recap on what uh, we're going to be working on today. Very, very simply, I'm going to be pairing some gnocchi with some cauliflower. Very, very simple recipe. As I mentioned, a very, very good vegetarian substitute for your dinner meals at home. This, of course, is on a bit of a medium level on the difficulty stage. It is, of course, going to uh, require a bit of work with some flour, so definitely needs a little more practice than it may appear on set. I will, of course, recommend if you haven't tried to make gnocchi before, do take a chance and watch the videos, see how it's done. You will, of course, get the idea as you continue to work on your, your recipe at home. So, Becky, we're going to start very, very simply. Uh, very importantly, we'll start with our aromatics. So, as you had mentioned, you mentioned you also wanted to learn a very simple way of mincing garlic, yes? Yeah. Now, the simple technique with you, uh, when you work with a pestle and mortar, the only trick you need to remember is salt. So one thing that salt does is it actually aids in making sure that your garlic will mince a little faster because it also gives it the grip and the, the texture as well. So you start by adding a teaspoon of some salt into your mortar. Add in your garlic. And once that's done, you begin by pounding down your garlic. 
So this, of course, uh, is one of the most simplest tools to work with in the kitchen, especially if you're going to be grinding whole spices or mincing such ingredients as garlic. So it begins, uh, begins very simply by pounding your garlic down. And you see, once you've got the chunks in there, all you need to do now is start going around with your, mot with your pestle. And what will happen is your garlic will continue to mince very, very simply. So what happens is the salt does two things. It will also aid in making sure that your garlic is also not too potent. And of course, by going round, that should take you about a minute to two minutes. You can, of course, go a little faster when it's mincing or it's uh, got a little, of, a little smaller in size. Just knock it down to the base, making sure, of course, to also clean your stick as you continue. And then just continue to go around like that. And that simply gives you a very, very beautiful mince. So begin by adding a bit of some oil to your pan. Very important that your pan is smoking hot at this stage. So just proceed to clean that out, making sure, of course, not to waste any of your garlic. Yeah. Right, and once that's done, you can just scoop that into the pan. And I'll, of course, make sure that is very, very low on the heat side. Uh -huh. So scoop everything in there. And while she does so, I'm going to also proceed to chop up some white onion. So I'm using white onion for this recipe for the fact that it's got a very, very mild uh, touch to it as opposed to red onion. It also complements the sauce very, very nicely. Gives it a nice, beautiful buttery finish. All right, simple as that. And proceed to chop that finely. Now, I love to ask Becky, do you use a lot of white onion when you cook? I love, I actually love white onion. You love white onion. So this is, of course, something that you've seen before, yeah? Yes, yes. So you will, of course, try this recipe out, mentioning that Amen. most of the ingredients are easy to find, yeah? Amen. Right, so you can begin by stirring that. So what we're looking for is a very, very dark color in the garlic. We're pretty much just going to infuse the pan with a bit of the garlic, and then we're going to scoop it out. And while she does so, I'm quickly going to finish chopping up my white onion. Making sure to chop, of course, as finely as you possibly can. And very importantly, don't forget to discard the stems that you will not use. Right, so as you can see, the garlic is very, very dark in color. Yeah. And the reason why we pretty much cook it to this stage is because we only want the infusion of the garlic in there. So once your garlic is colored completely, you're just going to scoop that out completely. So it's basically more like burning the garlic, but of course don't, make, don't get the room very, very smoky while doing so. So scoop out all your garlic. And this you're basically just going to throw away, you're not going to use that. As I said, we're not uh, making it a very, very garlicky uh, dish, but we do want that hint of garlic and it's going to be a little sweet. So to the same pan, proceed to add some oil again. Okay. And all you need to do now is begin by sauteing your onions. So you can give that a mix. And as we start off the process, I'll also ask Becky, uh, are you a big fan of uh, pasta? Yeah, I love spaghetti. You love spaghetti? It's the easiest food to cook, so of course yes, I do of love course, it. It saves you quite a bit of time, yeah? Uh, yeah? That's okay. Now, also something also I would love to find out, um, have you ever uh, encountered or managed to have a dish that's composed of homemade pasta? No. Not at all? No. So this is I going to be your first? Yeah. Okay. Right, so very, very simply, we're going to begin by sweating those out. And to that, we're also going to begin to add the rest of our seasonings. So I'm going to start off by adding my stock cube. So you can use a, ve a vegetable one, a beef one, or a chicken one, depends on your preference. Then to that, we're also going to incorporate our dried oregano. So this is basically just to build the flavors. I'm also going to add my taco spice seasoning. 
Yeah. And of course, very importantly, always remember to add your chilies more towards the end of the dish. To that, we're also going to add a few springs of some fresh thyme. You can, of course, also use dried thyme for the same thing or for the same recipe. Have you seen this before? No. <laughs> so this is, of course, a new ingredient yeah. that you encountered today. Yeah. Now, a lot of people may not, of course, be familiar with the thyme for the fact that it's also not easily available. Yeah. But, of course, if you do manage to get your hands on the fresh variety, do even plant some in your garden. I've, of course, taken time to plant some at home, so it actually makes it much easier to get it fresh. Wow, that's nice. Yep. Now to that, we're going to now begin to add the tomato base to the dish. So very, very importantly, I'm also going to be incorporating some tinned tomatoes. This you can, of course, find in a supermarket. They come in tins, so you should see them labeled as uh, peeled tomatoes. So we're going to add those in there, and as you can see, they're a little chunky. And you can, of course, uh, make your own uh, tomato uh, consistency just the same. I don't know if you've uh, learned the technique of peeling tomatoes. Not so much. Uh -huh. I think it's better when you blend because yeah. you get the, all the paste from the now, tomatoes. One beautiful thing about using them whole like this is it actually gets the sauce nice and chunky. Mm -hmm. So what we're basically going to do is we're going to allow the tomato to continue cooking down slowly. But you can, of course, also be able to come up with the same tomatoes very simply from home. All you need to do is get some whole tomatoes and then have a pot of water boiling. So what you're going to do is, for instance, if this was a tomato, what you do is you'd cut a star on the top mm -hmm. and the same on the bottom, but not too far in. Mm -hmm. So what you do is you drop them in hot water. And as soon as the tomatoes just, as soon as you start noticing the skin peeling, mm -hmm. You can take them out and leave them in some cold water and the skin will come out very, very easily. Oh. And you can be able to do the, just the same thing we've done today. Ah, nice. I think I'm going to do that. When so I it's also a very, very good way of uh, getting... You, I think you've seen the effect when you try and cook a meal and you have those beetle yeah. skins in the dish. And it's irritating. And it's irritating because you can't get them out. So that's a very, very simple way of peeling your own tomatoes. Yeah. But of course, if you can find the tin variety, it will of course save you time and effort. Right. So as those continue going, we're also going to be adding some store-bought pasta sauce. So this is basically a tomato sauce or, or a tomato, uh, simple tomato sauce that composed of some onions, uh, some garlic, some ginger, and some herbs. So what they did is they cooked this and they blended it together. But because of the fact that it also carries a nice, beautiful uh, sharpness to it, it's also going to give the sauce that we're making today a bit of an uplift. So we're also going to add that to our pan. It smells fantastic. And you can actually get the smell coming through as, as soon as that goes in. Now, very important to mention, uh, when you're making your own sauces, remember you can, of course, do this way in advance. Most uh, similar sauces that are done in advance can actually last up to four days in the fridge and you can actually freeze it to up to six months. Wow. So if you're going to be redoing the same recipe, you can make a bigger pot of the same. Just subdivide it into small containers and you can keep it in the freezer for up to six months. Okay. But of course, if you're going to be doing the same thing in the same week, I will always recommend don't carry the same mixture into week two because it's also going to get very acidic and the taste will not, of course, be the same as the way you began. Okay. Right, so as that continues, we're also going to finish that off by adding our cayenne pepper. So that's just going to give it a bit of heat. Uh -huh. it smells great. It smells good, yeah? <laughs> Perfect. Now, of course, as that continues, I'm also going to jump into the rest of the dish. I'm also going to be incorporating some of our spring onions. So for this, I'm basically just going to slice off the tips of the stems. And these I'm basically going to add into the pot as they are. The reason for this is actually much easier to get them out. I just need to infuse them into the So this is basically just infusing flavors. You can, of course, chop them finely and add them into the dish, but because they're also going to stick out quite a bit yeah. and we really want the sauce uh, nice and red, you can, of course, use such uh, techniques to just infuse your sauce with the, uh, with the same. So you can also be able to do so with uh, such ingredients as garlic and ginger. You can just pound them in their chunky sizes and add them. add them in there, cook them in the sauce, and then just remove them before you're done cooking. 
they will actually leave a very, very beautiful flavor. So as she continues to do that, we'll of course get some time as well to jump onto the next part of our dish. So I'm just going to clear my station here and I'm going to leave the board on the side. Now this next step we're going to be working on, we're going to be doing some homemade gnocchi as I mentioned. We'll of course also leave this to continue to cook on the side. So I'm just going to cover that up. And I'm going to allow you to, you can actually just put the spoon right there. You can set it aside, no problem. Right, so the uh, next step we're going to be working on is our gnocchi. Very, very simple. Now also to mention the cauliflower, the cauliflower is of course going to be infused into the dish a little later. We will of course steam this before proceeding to add it in. So you can actually proceed to, uh, to remove the flowers from this a little earlier. Or you can of course get some time to do so while you allow your water to come to the boil. So I'm also going to allow that to sit at the back just to give us some space. So this is a very, very simple uh, pasta as I mentioned. Very, very simply start by adding your two thirds of flour. So about two thirds of a cup and just sift that through. Now this is a very, very important tool as well. Remember there's times that you also have pieces of pieces particles of, in yeah. your flour. So this also helps in making sure that your flour is nice and clean before you proceed. And to that, very importantly, remember to season with a pinch of salt. I also like to use a bit of some thyme in this. Remember, gnocchi sometimes is very, very bland in flavor. And just to be able to get a beautiful flavor coming through, you can, of course, uh, incorporate some dried uh, herbs or you can actually use some fresh ones. So this I'm just going to ask you to take out this, this tiny, tiny leaves and you can throw them in there. Can you use, um, what is it, rosemary instead of Rosemary leaves? is also a very, very good alternative. You can actually use thyme, rosemary, marjoram if you can find some. So many different herbs you can use. But remember, whichever herb that you're going to use will, of course, carry in the flavor that you're going to be infusing to the dish. Okay. So if you're going to be going with rosemary, you may also want to use rosemary for the sauce, just so that you get a beautiful balance of flavor. Okay. Right, so as uh, Becky continues to do so, I'm just going to make some space on the counter here. I will of course also mention you will of course require a baking tray and an oven for this recipe. There is of course different ways of making your gnocchi. There is uh, different varieties as, that also come with different recipes. You can of course be able to find gnocchi that's steamed. You can also be able to bake your gnocchi and have them golden brown and incorporate them to your sauce. And you can also fry them on a pan. But because of the fact that when we're trying to keep it nice, rich and healthy, we're going to be using the oven option for today. So begin the process by drizzling some oil on a baking tray. And this is basically just to make sure that they don't stick to your pan. And using a brush, proceed to work your oil right around the tray, making it nice and even. And this, of course, now being ready to go into the oven, you can set this aside for a few minutes just to give you a few, uh, just to give you time to work through your gnocchi. Also, remember at this stage to begin to reheat your oven. So I'm going to allow that to heat up, and we're going to set it back to about 180, which is the temperature that we'll be grilling or cooking our gnocchi in. Right? How are you doing, Becky? So far, so good. Yeah. Perfect. So the stems that remain, you can dump them in there. And of course, very importantly, always uh, be very, very vigilant in making sure that your sauce does not burn. So always make sure to just keep mixing that through, making sure, of course, to keep it at the lowest uh, possible temperature. So because this is a little bigger in size, the burner itself, I'm going to move it to a smaller end of the, of the, of the top. And we're just basically going to allow that to continue cooking very, very gently, giving the tomatoes a bit of time to break down. Now we're going to jump into the next step. So this is basically uh, the dough that we're going to be using for the gnocchi. So very importantly, we're going to add the water in very, very little amounts. You know, this always makes it easier for you to not add too much and then you have to correct yeah. the mixture. So begin the process by working your dough with your fingertips. Of course, always rubbing off the sides, making sure that you don't 
or you rather have all of your flour mixed in. So you can add a little bit of water once more. So this as well, uh, on most occasions, I find that you may not, I may not, of course, uh, always find that the same measure of water mixes every, uh, the same quantity may not mix the same way every time. Of course, there's times that your flour may, of, of course, also so change in yes, consistency. Yes, yes. So it's also very important that you actually master the technique by adding it in small amounts. And right up until your dough just begins to form a ball at the center of your bowl, proceed to also work the base of your bowl, making sure that no you're keeping left. it exactly, nothing that's left behind. And of course, I have seen this happen a lot when people try and work, uh, try and rush the process by trying to rinse their hands in the, in the sink. So this is a very, very simple technique of making sure that you don't have to do so. So all you need to do is grab a bit of flour and just use that to rub along your fingertips. Even when you're making chapatis, never try and wash off the flour in the sink because it'll do two things. It can actually clog your sink, sink and you yeah. can actually have a problem with your plumber. So very, very simply, just rub some flour on your fingertips and as you can see, it comes out very, very simply. And what if you use, instead of using flour, you use blue band? No, blue or me, butter. No, butter won't work because what happens is you actually, like now, if you were to decide to use butter or blue band, what you do is you'd change the recipe completely. Because oh, yeah, yeah. what happens is as you rub, this butter will mix into the flour and it will also mix into your dish, okay. which is, of course, an ingredient that you don't need. So be sure not to try anything that is not part of the recipe. Otherwise, you'll also change the consistency of your whole dish. Right, so... As soon as your dough is combined, you can actually be able to hold it into one firm bowl at the moment. Proceed to work your dough around the bowl. And as you can be able to see, nice and clean. clean. So this actually also enables you to make sure that you don't have any waste at all. And now we're going to move on to the countertop. So I'm just going to dust that very quickly. I'm just going to roll that into a nice firm bowl once more. Of course, doing it on a dusted surface yeah. makes sure that you also don't have it sticking to your surface. So just roll that out, of course, pressing as well to make sure that you don't have any air inside your dough. And just reconstitute that once more into the bowl. And you can actually allow that to rest in your bowl for about 10-15 minutes. Now, one beautiful thing that happens every time you allow your dough to rest, it actually allows for the gluten to take effect and it actually enriches your dough. Mm -hmm. So it's very, very important when working with the dough to actually allow it to rest in between stages. It actually gives a very, very beautiful consistency to your mixture. Okay, and Chef Andy, I'm mm -hmm. sure the audience is asking, uh -huh. what if I'm allergic to gluten? If you're allergic to gluten, you can also substitute wheat flour maybe with some whole wheat flour. So you can also be able to use brown flour for the same. Oh, okay. And there's also different flours out there you can try out. So there's chickpea flour that works out really well. You can also be able to use rice flour. Also very, very beautiful for making gnocchi. So there's different flours that uh, also give you, op uh, give you options. So for those, of, for those of you viewers, of course, who are not, of course, allowed by your dietitian to actually uh, use gluten for your meals, Remember, you can also use brown flour and any particular flours out there. As you can see, it's a very, very simple uh, recipe as well. So any particular flour that you may be able to find, the variety are endless. I pretty much, I think I have about six different varieties at home. So different flours will give different consistencies. You can also find semolina flour. You can find potato starch flour. So there's very, very many options. So for those who are, of course, uh, strict on gluten, there's still an option to enjoy gnocchi from home. Right, so as we allow that to rest on the side, I'm also going to task you with this beautiful flower of uh, cauliflower. So basically, I'm just going to clean about half of the counter just to give you some space to work. And I'm also going to give you the knife so all you're going to do is basically just break the stems from the flowers from the stem. And it's very simple. So you'll begin by turning it over. 
And now all I need you to do is pretty much slice Just as cut. closest, yeah, closest to the flower, farthest from the stem. Uh huh. Just go for it. All right. So once you break those up, you'll easily be able to break down your flowers, and you can proceed to do so right up until your flower is completely clean. So I'm going to allow you to hold on to that. And while Becky does so, we have of course uh, pretty much finished the first step of the dish, which is a sauce. So I'm pretty much just going to give that a look. And since this is also nice and thick, we're going to allow that to rest and cool off completely, which will of course give us time to proceed to throw our gnocchi in the oven. Now something I also uh, encounter over times, a lot of people are also not very familiar with working with cauliflower. I don't know if you are a fan of cauliflower yourself. I love cauliflower. Uh -huh. What, what have you tried to make with cauliflower in the past? Actually nothing, just nothing. cooking it, uh -huh. just just mixed it. with uh, broccoli uh -huh. and some other vegetables I can find Okay. and eat it. All right. It's very healthy. So now for that reason, I'm also going to be showing you a different take yeah. on, on working with cauliflower today. It also makes a very, very good accompaniment for a pasta dish. So we're pretty much going to finish doing uh, removing that from the stem. And what you need to begin to do next is basically have a pot on the go. So I'll begin the process by adding some water into a big pot. Be sure to use a nice big sizable pot for this reason, just to be able to steam up your cauliflower nice and easy. And it all, of course also gives you a bit of room to be able to make sure that your cauliflower steams up beautifully inside the pot. So I'm just going to place that on the heat here at the end. And all you need to do at this stage is basically allow for your water to come to the boil. You will, of course, proceed to steam your cauliflower very, very shortly before proceeding to uh, uh, cool it under some co uh, cold running water. We are, of course, also going to be able to get a nice consistency to it once we steam it. And this will, of course, also aid in making sure that it can actually absorb the sauce once we get to the final part of the cooking process. But very, very importantly, remember to season with a bit of salt. And all you need to do now is allow that to come to the boil and you're just going to proceed to steam your cauliflower. And in the meantime, I'm just going to grab that. Now, of course, in the meantime, it gives you a bit of time to finish off with your gnocchi. So very, very simply, all you need to do is just roll this on your countertop. And very important, always try and get a very even consistency. So you can, of course, do that by using both hands. It if, if, of course, it's still also nice and if it's, it's still big as well, you can pretty much break that into two pieces. And all you need to do is roll that into almost the thickness of a hot dog. So that's a very, very beautiful size to use just for you to relate to. So just proceed to roll that on your countertop, making sure, of course, to do so on a dusted surface. And of course, as you roll out, be sure to uh, give it a very, very gentle press from the center. So you basically roll from the center going sideways. And that should give you something almost in that consistency. Proceed to do the same thing for your second piece. Dusting your hands, of course, makes it much easier to handle your dough. But of course, remember also not to put too much flour, otherwise it will, of course, dry up. And all you need to do now is Proceed to finish rolling that out. If you do have excess flour on your countertop, just proceed to wipe it by hand. That should allow for you to be able to actually control the ratio of flour that you're using. And just proceed to roll that through. How's our water doing? It's yet to boil. Yet to boil. Right, so as you can see, it's pretty much a recipe that uh, requires a bit of labor. But of course, if you time it right, you can, of course, steam those in advance. You can make your sauce a little earlier. So you can actually be able to make this in the nick of time, even if you're really trying to hurry dinner and you're having guests. <laughs> right, so just to finish that off, be sure to also make sure to try and even out the sizes. Remember, one particular thing that's very crucial when working with gnocchi, try and make sure that the sizes are a little more even 
because this will of course also aid in making sure that they also cook in the right, um, in, they cook in a more even uh, time period. Right, so just to finish this off, and of course as I mentioned, very important to get the thickness right. So you can of course, on occasion you may find that there's bits of your mixture that may be thinner and thicker on the other edges. So all you're going to do now is maybe just move more attention to the thicker parts of your dough. And as you can see, it will pretty much even itself out. Yeah. Right, simple as that. And once that's done, you begin by slicing off the ends. And basically a very uh, simple way of portioning out your gnocchi, I like to use my thumb. So basically the distance from the tip of your thumb to the first, that little first line there just will be below your first knuckle. So you can pretty much just use that to measure that out and you can just mark the dough as you go. This of course also makes it easier for you to get evenness right through to the end. And all you need to do now is just slice that. Our water is boiled. Right, now you can throw the cauliflower in there. And then you can cover it as soon as that's done. Of course, giving us a bit of time to finish our gnocchi. So once done, proceed to just lay those, making sure to give a bit of room on your tray. This is of course to aid in making sure that you get a nice even coloring right through. All right. Right now, pretty much just repeat the process for the second piece. Of course, once more using your thumb to just mark out the sizes. And I find this much easier, a much easier way of portioning. It does save you time and it makes it consistent every time. And basically all you need to do is slice through once more. And of course use a sharp knife to do so. Otherwise you will of course stress your dough by pulling. And I'm just going to let you feel that last piece just to get the consistency. As you can see, it's not too flowery. It's almost like Play-Doh. It's, it's not very soft. It's very, very soft. Right, so pretty much that's all you need to do at this stage. So we're just going to add those onto the tray. And we're going to now proceed to bake this in the oven right up until they're golden brown in color. But very, very importantly, before adding them to your oven, I'm also going to add that small piece. Also, before you add them to the oven, be sure to drizzle with a bit of oil over each piece. And this is basically to make sure they also get a nice, beautiful browning right through. And what if it's someone who doesn't have an oven but wants to try this? Now, if you it? don't have an oven as well, you can get a hot, you can put a pan on the heat, make sure it's nice and hot, put some oil on it. And basically all you need to do is keep cooking and tossing them continuously. They'll also get a nice even browning color. But one beautiful advantage of using the oven is it, it cooks actually inside. It cooks <laughs> right through to the inside. Yeah. And it also makes sure that when you're serving them, they're not also doughy on the inside. Mm. Simple as that. Right, so we're going to slide that into the oven. I'm just going to open that for you. So slide it right through the center there. Up, 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 yeah. Uh-huh, just push it through, just through the lines, yeah. Perfect. Right, now, very importantly, set your oven to about 180 degrees, and all you need to do is pretty much time those, making sure that they're beautifully golden brown before you take them out of the oven. But this will, of course, give us a bit of time to finish and clear up our station. But when we do come back, don't, change the, uh, don't touch your dial. We will, of course, take you through the process of uh, finishing off your cauliflower mixture and, of course, finishing off your very, very simple pasta dish. So please don't touch that dial. We'll be right back.
Welcome back ladies and gentlemen. If you're just tuning in, you've pretty much missed out on many of what many of the things we've done today. But remember you can be able to recap on this and many more through our YouTube channel that's Brand Plus TV Kenya. There you will be able to find this and many more beautiful recipes to try out at home. But for now, we're going to now close up the show by wrapping up the very very simple gnocchi dish that we are working on today. So I'm going to begin by taking out the broccoli and of course draining it. So this has of course uh, steamed and it's almost half cooked. So this we're basic, we basically allowed to sit in the strainer as you can see. And this is basically to aid in draining the water a little faster, keeping it nice and fresh and also allowing it to cool a little faster as well. So very simply, we're going to take that out completely. And I'm just going to pour that into a bowl. Right, so pretty much most of the dish is uh, complete. We're now just going to wrap it up and Becky, I'll ask you to come to this end. So I'm just going to begin by taking out the gnocchi from the oven, just to be able to show you what it looks like once fully cooked. So this should actually resemble some uh, chicken nuggets or any nuggets on particular. They should actually be nice and tough as you can see. So it should actually be almost very, very crispy on the outside. This is basically to aid it in making sure that it can actually absorb the sauces that once it joins a sauce that we made a little earlier and it will of course tenderize as it continues to cook. So we're going to proceed to set this aside and we'll of course begin as well to reheat another pan. Remember we're going to be combining this into one, uh, a one pot dish. So I'm going to begin by heating up a pan and to that, we're easily going to strain the sauce that we had a little earlier. Remember, there's a little bit of those specks of the spring onions that we had yeah. in there a little earlier. Yeah. So we're going to just pour that through a sieve. And using a flat spoon, you can proceed to just work your mixture through your sieve. This will, of course, make sure that you have a very, very nice uh, runny sauce to toss your gnocchi in. And now, of course, by getting rid of all the chunks in there, does, of course, allow for you to get a very, very beautiful, consistent sauce that you can actually be able to coat your gnocchi in. Right, once that's done, always remember to clean the bottom end of your sieve and proceed to discard the rest. To that, proceed to add in your gnocchi pieces. And this basically, you'll only allow for anywhere between two to three minutes to sit in that beautiful sauce that we started with. And this is basically just to give it just enough time to absorb the liquid. It will, of course, also puff up a, a little bit in size, and you'll actually be able to uh, to get the flavors to seep right through your gnocchi, which means once you bite into it, it's not also going to be flat in the inside and tasty on the outside. But I'm also going to slice this through just to be able to show you what it looks like on the inside. And as you can see, it's still a little doughy, yeah. but it's of course not as chewy as it should be, this being that it's actually gotten a bit of time to dry out in the oven. So this is the texture that you should be looking for. It should actually have a bit of layering on the inside. And what happens is the sauce is basically going to be absorbed and it's going to fill in those tiny little specks that you can see inside. Right. So proceed to just uh, toss the sauce right over your gnocchi making sure of course that the sauce, uh, or rather the gnocchi is of course uh, drenched in a bit of sauce as you continue. Tossing it continuously also allows for you to make sure that it's also coated beautifully all round. And once you pretty much have your gnocchi be, uh, sitting in there for about two to three minutes, we're just going to proceed to add our cauliflower. So I'm just going to spread those right around the pan. You can of course chop them into smaller sizes if you prefer. And if you of course also be, if you're looking at serving young kids, you may also want to cut them into smaller chunks. But for the fact that you do also want that texture and a bit of uh, sizable and give it a nice sizable portion, you can of course leave some also chunky. 
And you can, of course, also break some of them by hand. They should actually be nice and soft at this stage. And, of course, by steaming them, this, of course, also makes sure that they're also nicely uh, half-cooked. You also make sure that there's also not any sand pa uh, particles in there. Simple as that. And all we need to do now is proceed to toss that in the pan. Making sure, of course, to cover most of the ingredients in your pan with a sauce. Nice and simple, huh? Yeah. Right, so pretty much this is almost ready to serve. But very, very importantly, always remember to correct the flavors. So we're going to start by crushing in some black pepper corns. So a quick crushing right over the top. Or you can also use about a t uh, half a teaspoon of some black pepper powder. Also add a small pinch of salt just to correct the flavor. All right. And then we're also going to be incorporating the last two ingredients, very, very crucial ones. So I'm going to start by halving a whole lemon. And what the lemon does is it actually brings up the flavors of all the ingredients and the spices. So just proceed to squeeze about half a lemon worth of juice into your mixture. There's Simple also the that. trick you showed us of squeezing the lemon on your hand. Yes, you can also, if of course you also don't have a sieve, you can squeeze it right through your hands. And this is basically to make sure that you don't have any, any particles, seeds in the, yeah. not particles, but seeds. seeds. Yeah. Okay. Right, so the mixture is now nicely thickening up. But very, very importantly, a pasta is of course not complete without some cheese. Yes. So for that we are going to be incorporating a bit of some parmesan. So be sure to, of course, also lower your temperature completely at this stage. You can sprinkle about three quarters of your cheese into the mixture. Now, once your cheese is in there, all you need to do is just toss that very, very lightly in your pan. Of course, taking very much precaution in making sure that you don't also burn yourself. And you can also use a spoon to do the same thing. Simple as that. And now our gnocchi is pretty much ready to serve. Simple, yeah? Yeah. And I believe uh, you may actually be able to come up with this with the right planning. So, of course, I will mention uh, such ingredients such as a sauce you can be able to do in advance. Yeah. Uh, the dough you can, of course, also do in advance and just cook it right before you serve. Also, another tip I was also to share. Remember, you can also steam this in the same liquid that you steamed your broccoli. Uh, sorry, your cauliflower. So once you take your cauliflower out, you can also dump them in the same liquid. They'll of course cook up and they'll be almost, they look almost like like uh, like dumplings on the outside. They'll of course also puff up slightly. Yeah. So you can of course also steam them if you're looking at avoiding the use of oil and maybe if you don't also have an oven. You can also steam them up. Once they're ready, throw them in the mixture and toss it slightly and you can serve also straight after that. Right, so we're now going to proceed to just move our mixture onto our plate. So very importantly, always start with the chunks of vegetable, making sure, of course, to spread those out nice and evenly on your plate. Proceed now to add your pieces of gnocchi, of course, taking time to make sure that they're evenly spread out around just to give a nice, beautiful presentation and appeal. Proceed to add just a little bit of your cauliflower once more. And very importantly, always have the star dish or the star ingredient, which is your gnocchi, standing out, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, so in goes your gnocchi, spreading them nice and evenly around. And now you can easily just pull the vegetables closest to you and tilt your pan forward. That will make it much easier for you to grab your sauce. And just proceed to go around the top. Making sure, of course, to always have just enough liquid in your mixture or in your dish to allow for you to be able to actually 
consume the gnocchi, being that it is dumplings, very important that you have a little bit of liquid to go with that. And just to finish this off, we're just going to drizzle a bit of cheese right over the top. And our gnocchi is done. Would you like to give it a taste and tell us how we did? Yes, please. All right, so you can grab a spoon on the side. Be sure also to watch for the heat, it's a bit hot. The sauce is wow. Okay. Cauliflower is nice and soft as well. Yeah. And of course also very important to make sure you don't overcook your cauliflower, otherwise it could of course disintegrate and you will lose of course the foundation of your dish. How is it? Awesome. It's good, yeah? <laughs> Perfect. That of course wraps up the show for today. Thank you once again for joining me on the set today. I hope I've managed to convince you that homemade pasta is something to try. I think I'm going to try and cook this tonight. Tonight yeah. should actually be much easier. And as I mentioned as well, there's also different options of vegetables you can use. So don't uh, restrict yourself to just a cauliflower. Any particular vegetables of choice you can actually be able to steam up very simply. You can be able to mix into the dish. And also something also to point out, remember if you're really going to consider this a pure vegetarian dish, you can of course avoid the parmesan cheese and you can serve that to any vegetarian whatsoever. Yeah. Right? Yes. So ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the last part of the show. I will of course thank you once again as always for tuning in with us this far. But do remember, you can recap and catch up on anything that you missed out by uh, following and uh, subscribing to our YouTube channel. That's Brand Plus TV Kenya. You will, of course, be able to recap on this very, very simple recipe and, of course, be able to catch up on what you may have missed on. But for those of you who, of course, looking forward to sharing your comments with us, do feel free to also like our page. That's Brand Plus TV Kenya on Facebook. You can also be able to leave your comments, queries, or any particular suggestions that can aid us in making the show a little more worth the while for you at home. But for now, from me and Becky, it's a very simple goodbye. Wishing you God's blessings and see you soon. <laughs>